In this Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this typewriter typing effect right within Premiere Pro. No plugins required. Now I'm gonna show you a really quick way to do this that doesn't look or sound as great in my opinion. That's not really a great effect. I see a lot of people sharing how to do this typewriter effect on YouTube using this method, which is simply a linear wipe. So once you have a, a text layer, you just add this linear wipe effect and you set a keyframe from zero to 100 or from 100 to 0%, you see here in the transition completion going down with the wipe angle at negative 90. And with the sound effect, it helps a little bit. And in a pinch, maybe, but I'm gonna show you this better way like this. And we're gonna learn everything that I did to create this effect. If you just wanna know the basics, what I did is a keyframe of the source text. That's what we're doing. If you wanna follow along with the whole tutorial though, let's get going. So what I'm going to do is start a new sequence with this typing clip that I've downloaded from Storyblocks. Hashtag not sponsored, just great stock footage. You don't need this at all though. Next, I'm going to add this typewriter sound effect. This really helps sell the effect and I've included this in the downloadable resources of the Premiere Pro course if you're taking that full course. And I'm just going to find a spot in here where there's a decent amount of typing so that if I'm typing something a little bit longer, it, I have enough keystrokes or sound effects for it to be actually typing that full sentence or whatever I'm saying. You can play around with it, find a spot that fits whatever you're working on. Next, I'm going to add my title. To do that, we can take the type tool, just click in our program monitor, and then type whatever you want. So I'm going to type in, hello, I'm Phil, okay? And you can open up the essential graphics panel if you want, and under the edit tab, now we have all of our options for like centering our text if you want it to be centered. You can also change the font by selecting all that text or just selecting the layer itself and changing the text font here. I'm using American Typewriter just to, again, sort of help sell that old timey style, although the background video is of a laptop. So maybe I'll change it back to something like Times regular. That's fine. And that's pretty much it. A quick tip though, if you don't have the essential graphics panel open because you don't really need it, but you still want to center your text, just hold the command key if you're on a Mac, that would be control on a PC and see those red lines pop up. That helps me snap this layer to the center of the frame. Now, the reason I typed everything out before and we're gonna go backwards in just a second is because I do want to know where the center of everything is. Of course, you could change that later, but I think it's good to just have everything centered in the beginning. Then I'm gonna go up to my effects controls, drop down my text layer down here, and what we're actually going to be animating is our source text. And so if you've used keyframes before, you know that you're setting a keyframe to tell Premiere Pro that at this point in time, I want this property to be set to X, whatever it is. It's your scale, your position, or your actual text. And so I'm actually gonna go in here, I'm gonna zoom in on my timeline quite a bit, and I wanna make sure that I have the tra audio track open so I can see the peaks of each little keystroke. So every time I hear that little keystroke, that's when I'm going to type on a letter. So the first thing I wanna do is actually go to the very beginning and I'm actually gonna delete this text. So I'm gonna select all my text and click this toggle animation button. That sets a keyframe for the text here. So you don't actually have to type all your text out beforehand, but it was just kind of a good way to know what I'm actually going to type. Next, what I'm going to do is go to that first little peak in my timeline right here where I see that first keystroke. 
Then I'm gonna go into the source text, make sure you hit that source button, and go into that layer because if you click somewhere else, it's going to create a new text layer. I wanna make sure I'm on the same source text and start typing H for hello. Then I'm gonna go on my timeline again, go to the next keystroke. I think that little bump right there isn't actually a keystroke, so I'm gonna go there, here, and you can see I'm just going along my timeline and with every little keystroke, I am adding one more character, even a space. And what's happening, actually that last one should have been a comma right here. Comma, then space. So you'll see what's happening now, it's animating this text on. With every keyframe, it's adding a new letter. So I'm trying to go a little bit fast to get through this, but you can be as perfectionistic as you want. I do think going in here and doing it like this really creates an effect that's much more, much better than the linear wipe. All right, so then after this, maybe I'll have one more space, boop, and then I'm going to trim the rest of this audio and delete that right there, okay? So now let's watch this through, just so you can see this. Pretty good, right? All right, so now this is looking pretty darn good. To really sell it, we're going to add this line right here, this blinking line. Not sure what it's called, so hit me up in the comments of this video to let me know what that is called. There's lots of ways to create a little line. Anything can kind of work. I'm actually gonna go ahead and open up Essential Graphics, go ahead to Edit, click New, and I'm gonna do Rectangle. And then I'm just going to make this super skinny and I wanna see what it looks like compared to our text. So I'm gonna zoom in here quite a bit and something like that looks good. And then again, you can kind of use any of these features, the position here, the uh, position over here, the vector motion up here to move it into place. Now, once we have it on sort of the proper vertical space, we're going to actually animate it from left to right, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and close my essential graphics panel. I don't need that. I'm gonna zoom this out just a little bit. And then just choosing any of these, I'll do it for motion. All of them will work. I'm just going to move it all the way over to the left side of our text to start out with. And I'm going to set a position keyframe there. Next, what I'm going to do is just with my keyboard arrows moving over to the right, I'm just going to go until we see that next keyframe or that next letter pop up basically. Go till the E pops up and you wanna make sure this is pretty perfect right when those letters pop up. Otherwise, it's not gonna look good. And in between here where there's a space, I'm gonna put a space. And then when the I pops up, I'm gonna put the I. And it's all these details that make you a great, whoops, that's not gonna be at the right spot. A great video editor, right? We love doing this, right? This is fun, this is what you wanna do for a living. This is how you wanna make money on YouTube by making cool typewriter effects. Cool, so this is great. We have our little line here set to the right spots, but we have a problem. If we play through this, look what happens. It's just moving. It's not actually jumping from one spot to the next. Well, there's a quick fix. 
select all of our keyframes, right click, go to temporal interpolation and go to hold. And now what this is telling Premiere Pro is at each keyframe, put it at that spot and don't move it in between. Cool, right? And maybe in between this first one, actually I'm gonna move this very first keyframe over just a little bit and then just move it over. Cause there's sort of like a click, you kinda hear a click there. It's almost like it's moving. And then afterwards to really sell it, again, we want that little blink when you're just pause, you're waiting for that inspiration. So to quickly do that, I'm just gonna set, click it with my razor tool and go 10 frames. Shift right twice, razor blade, shift right twice, razor blade, shift right twice, razor blade, shift right twice, razor blade. And then I'm just going to delete the in, the in between ones. This one's probably a little bit long. And I find that 10 frames looks pretty good. All right. And if you need to extend this even longer, I could just shift right and then I can select all of these and option click them, all of them option click. And now that just copies all of them with that spacing in between. And that is the typewriter effect in Premiere Pro. Pretty cool, right? It's all about being perfectionistic with the audio sound effect, making sure those keys, those letters come on exactly when those keys hit. So I would probably go back and make sure that the sound that I was actually having a letter appear on was actually a, 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 a typed key. Um, but otherwise, I think it looks pretty darn good. Cool. Awesome, so that is the advanced, more in-depth way of creating the typewriter effect in Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you use this, tag me in your videos on Instagram, share it with me on Instagram, on YouTube, wherever, and I'd love to check it out and share it with my audience as well. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you in another tutorial.